Alright, so here we are going to be adding these two vectors. These lines with the arrows are, are what we refer to as vectors, and they have a magnitude, which is how much. So this vector is going to be 12 meters long, and this second vector is 16 meters long. And we want, what we want to know is what is the resultant. So we're going to draw a resultant. And it's going to be from the start point to the end point. So that's our resultant. That's what we're looking for. So when we add these two vectors together, that's the resulting motion. So just remember, like in class, this would be crazy's path. This would be lazy's path. And these are actually complete with an arrow, because that is the direction of our resulting vector. But what we need to know is what is the x component and y component of our first vector, and what is the x component and y component of our second vector. So we'll do our first vector 1 first. We'll call this, pick a different color, and we'll call this vector 1. Alright, so over here we are going to write vector 1, and we know that it's equal to 12 meters. And our vector has an x component, we'll call x1, we don't know what that equals yet, and we have a y component, we'll call y1. Alright, then our second vector, we'll call this v2, also has a resulting magnitude, it is 16 meters. And it, just like the first one, has an x component we'll call x2, which we don't know yet, and a y component we'll call y2, which we do not yet know yet. Alright, so what we need to do is use trigonometry to solve for our components, and we know that sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. If we, arra if we rearrange this, our hypotenuse sine theta would equal our opposite, which is typically our y side. And it will be for the purposes of this tutorial. We also have cosine theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. And we could rearrange this let me make this H a little nicer here. Hypotenuse cosine theta equals the adjacent. Which is typically, and for the purposes of this tutorial, is our x. And then we also have tangent theta. which is opposite over adjacent. So now what we have to do is use our calculator and to find our x1, our x, we're going to have to use our hypotenuse, which is 12 meters and use cosine theta for the x. Our cosine theta is cosine 70. So hypotenuse cosine 70 degrees. And we get 4.10. Now let's make sure we're, we are in degree mode. So we can write Four point one for our first x. And for our first y, we can actually use 12 sine theta. So this is going to be 12 
sign 70 degrees. Let's see. Oh, I used extra parentheses there. Let's put that in again. And we get 11.3. All right, next we need to find the x and y component of V2. So what we found here is our x. This is our x, our x1. And this isn't the best line ever, but that's our y1. And now we need to solve for our x2. And our y2. So we'll do that by using our hypotenuse 16 meters and our our theta 20 degrees. So we plug in 16 cosine 20 for our x. We get 15. And then we plug in 16 sine theta. 16 sine 20 to find our y, we get 5.5. So what we need to do now is actually find an x and y total. Our total is going to be our x total when we add this together is going to look like this, and our y total will be vertical to reach up all the way to our the end of our arrow. So this is our x total, this is our y total, and we find these by adding our x's together. So x total is going to equal our x1 plus our x2. So 4.1 plus 15 is 19.1. This is our x total. And our y total is going to be 11.3 plus 5.5. And we get 16.8. So our y total equals y1 plus y2, and that is 16.8. Now we have to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the resultant. So we're actually going to be using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's say that 19.1 is a. And 16.8 is B, and that equals our resulting vector squared. So 19.1 squared plus 16.8 squared equals 647. So let me go over here and write that 647.05 is our c squared. Well, in order to find c, we have to take the square root of both of these things. So we'll go ahead and take the square root of 647. 0 0.05, and we get 25.4. So our C, our resulting vector, equals 25.4 meters. And now we need to find our new theta. This is our new direction here. And in order to do that, we would do, uh, we use a trigonomic function, and we use the inverse of that trigonomic function. Since we're using our, our y, which is our opposite, the side opposite of our theta, and we have our x, which is the side adjacent to our theta, 
uh, we could use tangent because tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what we'll end up using, let's pick a different color here. What we'll end up using is the inverse of tangent. opposite over adjacent, so y over x, and that is going to equal our theta, and then theta, yeah, so our theta is equal to inverse tangent, our total y, which is 16.8, over our total x, which is 19.1, Number right here. And so we'll just plug that in. The inverse inverse tangent of sixteen point eight over nineteen point one. Close our parentheses and we get forty one point three. So our theta equals 41.3 degrees. Always make sure to include your units in your answer. So when we add these vectors together, we end up getting a new resulting vector with a magnitude of 25.4 meters and an angle of 41.3 degrees.